These are some of Bahrain's youngest citizens, visiting a site that was once home to their earliest ancestors. Beneath Bahrain Fort lie the traces of a city created by the Dilmun civilization more than 5,000 years ago. History has reshaped Bahrain many times since those days. These young visitors also live in a time of historic change. They're members of the first generation that will come of age in a nation recently reborn as a democracy. The Kingdom of Bahrain is accelerating into a new future. Just like these cars, the Bahrain International Circuit's first major drag racing event. Three years ago, His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa released the brakes and accelerated Bahrain's drive to modernization as a democracy. Bahrain has not looked back since. Across the nation, the signs of change are visible everywhere. Dramatic new buildings are rising. Whole areas are being renewed. New towns are being built. And innovative business ventures are underway. Everywhere, the talk is of bright new possibilities. This is the financial harbour in Manama, the most dramatic example of this process of transformation. Intended as the Gulf's premier financial centre, its dual towers will be the tallest structures in Bahrain. Beneath their 53 floors will be a complex of homes, a shopping mall, a new stock exchange, an auditorium and more. Today, a man with a soaring personal vision to match his nation's new ambitions is visiting the towers getting a taste of Bahrain's highest place. Adnam al Kassab has already achieved fame after leading Bahrain's successful expedition to the South Pole two years ago. Now he has his sights set yet higher. And next year, he'll lead Bahrain's first expedition to climb Mount Everest. We are cli climbing Mount Everest because it's one of the uh, most challenging uh, mountains in the world and as because for, for the love of Bahrain and the king and the citizen of Bahrain we are taking this challenge in our shoulder to show the world as Bahrain citizen we can we can if we try our best we can make it to the top. Al Kassab and his teammate will intensify their preparations early next year. They're spurred on by the new air of optimism in Bahrain. It's felt by everybody as Bahrainis become used to living in one of the few real democracies in the Arab world. For centuries, government in Bahrain was based upon the succession of its ruling family. But the journey to democracy began earlier in the 20th century. This is Sheikh Salman bin Ahmed Al Fatah Fort, a 19th century seat of government. Leading physician Dr. Isa Amin is also an expert on Bahrain's history. Well, it has been now a century since the people of Bahrain uh, struggled for freedom and democracy. Uh, there has been uh, events for the last century where uh, Bahraini people expressed their wish to participate and be part of the world enjoying the freedom and human rights. It has been through the 20s until what you witness now, that's the transition period towards democracy. We live through a, a world whereby the communication through the media is fast and accurate and Bahrainis, like any other people in the world, yearning and loving and struggling for freedom and democracy. I think this was behind the project of His Majesty the King when he 
introduced reform and democracy in Bahrain. Bahrain may be a small nation, but has a long history of achievement. It's one of the oldest inhabited places in the Gulf, a center of civilization more than 5,000 years ago. It was also one of the first countries to embrace Islam, just eight years after the Hijra. And it was here in the 1930s that oil was first found in the region. Until that oil began to trickle into the economic veins of the country, life for many ordinary people had changed little for centuries. The main income had come from pearl fishing. In its heyday, 20,000 pearl fishermen worked these waters. Pearl fishing may now be history, but a new source of pride is Bahrain's transition to democracy. One man who well understands the workings of democracy is the government's information minister, Dr. Mohammed Abdul Ghaffar. Before becoming part of the government, he'd been Bahrain's UN representative and ambassador to the United States. Uh, the most uh, important thing that Bahrain gained from this process of reform, it's a process of democratization which started and it, this process gives the Bahrainis uh, a very significant opportunity for renewal and for change and for economic development uh, and political development. I think that uh, the reform process which, is, uh, which has started in Bahrain and the, the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad, it really uh, it showed that Bahrain can always, as his Turkey has been always, can renew itself and can create environment for innovation and development. Bahrain's road to democracy began long ago, but the most dramatic steps on this journey came almost immediately after His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa succeeded his father as Emir in 1999. He began a period of dramatic transformation, built upon the strengths of the past. His Majesty understood that true social justice meant giving all citizens equal rights under the new constitution. <laughs> ليس من أجل البحرين وحدها وإنما لخير منظومتنا العربية والإسلامية بل الإنسانية قاطبة. Bahrain's transformation into a constitutional monarchy gained near unanimous support when put to the vote in a referendum. This was the key reform in the National Charter which included giving full political rights to women. Such is the depth of change that citizenship is now on the curriculum across Bahrain's growing number of schools. This is Umm Salama, Intermediate Girls' School in central Manama. Today's lesson is about democracy. Yeah, the first picture there, His Majesty King Hamad. What's going on in this picture? Yes, Noor. He's holding up high the Bahrain National Charter. The first elections were for the municipal authorities. 
The king emphasized the importance of everyone taking part. فانني ادعوكم الى ممارسه حقكم الانتخابي الدستوري في الانتخابات البلديه بكل حريه ومسؤوليه. هذا الحق الذي يمثل واجبا في الوقت ذاته حيث لا ديمومة للديمقراطية إلا بممارستها ولا تعميق لروح المواطنة إلا بالالتزام بها حقوقا وواجبات. In October, further elections were held. This time to choose the 40 members of the Council of Representatives, with a second house formed of appointed men and women. It has made Bahrain into the most progressive democracy in the Gulf region. A leading international lawyer, Jan Paulsen, worked closely with the king as an advisor in preparing the constitution. The most important thing to understand is that the Bahraini constitution was created in Bahrain by Bahrainis for, in the interest of the Bahraini people. Uh, but as that work came to a close, King Hamad uh, asked me uh, to study the constitution and to uh, get the best international advisors that he could, uh, not to alter the constitution, but to check that the constitution was in all ways in conformity with international norms of human rights. There are half a dozen conventions of the United Nations which have been sus subscribed to by Bahrain, and he wanted to be sure that this constitution in all ways was in conformity with universal principles. And when he did that, I realized that uh, he was looking for a constitution which was not, not drafted in a way to suit him, but that was a constitution that obeyed uh, appropriate principles, and it was a courageous thing to do. The reforms offered other significant changes. Ownership of homes was made easier. His Majesty announced that all loans would be written off at whatever stage people were in buying their homes. All political prisoners were free. Dissidents from overseas invited to return home and trade unions were permitted. One of the most vital freedoms within a democracy is the right to speak openly. A key forum for this is the press, whose freedom is now guaranteed under the Constitution. Bahrain has six newspapers. Its oldest, Akbar al Khalij, founded in 1976, is edited by Anwar Abdul Rahman. The beauty of democracy, I always call it the sword with the two edges. It cuts both sides. Meaning that we have the right to write, but also the other side has the right also to pursue what we have written legally if we are wrong. This has created a, an era, a new era to all of us, that the papers will not be banned, that papers will not be stopped, that the readers will not be deprived from their paper, but the case can be taken to the court and the verdict of the judges actually will be the end of everything. Akbar al Khalij will soon have further competition. Ibrahim Bashmi, a member of the Shura, plans a new title in early 2006. أهم النتائج اللي وضحتها إحدى المؤسسات التي تهتم بحرية الصحافة بأن البحرين والكويت هما الدولتين المتقدمتين في منطقة الجزيرة العربية التي تتمتعان بحرية سياسية متقدمة جدا من الملاحظ أن الآن اللي لاحظ خلال من تحولات الميثاق في البحرين حتى الآن بأن نسبة الحرية في مجال التعبير قد وصلت أنا أعتقد إلى حدود عليا سواء من خلال كتاب العمدة الذين يكتبون آراءهم بكل حرية وبكل صراحة أو من خلال التحقيقات والمقابلات الصحفية التي تقدم في البحرين. Dr. Fakhria Dari is also a Shura member, one of six women appointed after the election produced an all-male lower house. Democracy uh, did a big change on women in Bahrain. I think we are very lucky people among the region. Uh, to have democracy and to involve women in 
most of the uh, political life. Uh, for example, women had opportunity to be a member of the parliament, uh, women given opportunity to be a minister, to be a president of the universities, and also given opportunity to participate in election and to uh, be uh, for both, for the uh, parliament and for the municipality. So I think we are very lucky people. Another woman given a chance to progress in the new democracy is the health minister, Dr. Nada Hafa. She's been working in the health service for years, but was appointed to the Shura and then made Bahrain's first female cabinet minister. Well, the key health issues right now are chronic non-communicable diseases. We have passed the stage of infectious diseases as leading causes of death, but right now these diseases the, which cause death in most part of the world, especially the developed countries, are the cardiovascular diseases, the uh, cancer and the diabetes, hereditary blood diseases. And as you can see, these diseases are more difficult and challenging to reduce because they have to do with the behavioral pattern of people, the way they eat and the way they live their life, the, the uh, physical activity, smoking habits. So this makes also their decision uh, in, in choosing the right uh, partner when they marry so that the hereditary blood diseases get less and less by time. So this, these are our challenges. And of course, along with these challenges would be to further improve the services and to make the finance available in order to sustain those achievements. Dr. Hafad is one of two women in the cabinet. She expects women to take an ever-increasing role in public life. Already, up to 30 are expected to run for election next year. Now, when the society did not elect a woman in the elected chamber, His Majesty the King appointed six women to show the society, look, women can do a lot to serve the society at the legislative levels. And also, in the cabinet, His Majesty the King and His Highness the Prime Minister have appointed two women so far as ministers. So these are all positive achievements for women in the country. But definitely, we're looking forward for much more. From healthy citizens to a growing economy, Bahrain is undergoing dramatic changes. Under the guidance of His Highness, the Prime Minister, it's enjoying ever greater economic success. Dr. Hassan Fakhro is the Minister of industry and commerce. Democracy has enhanced the uh, role of law in Bahrain. It, ha it has uh, reinforced the attractiveness of uh, Bahrain and of the country uh, for outsiders to come and for outsiders to invest. Uh, and transparency has played also a great role in, if you like, uh, uh, the speed that a lot of work in the economic field, in the commercial and industrial field, has uh, happened as a result of this democracy. And the results that we have in the last two to three years, year after year, shows the, if you like, the testament, testimony to uh, this democracy in the, t in the increase, in the substantial increase in investment and in economic activity in the land. Other benefits of the changing economic climate are felt at shopping centres, like the nearly completed mall at Sitra, and here at the popular Seif Mall. They were once fully owned by the government, but economic reforms have meant 40% are now in public hands. Trade has always brought people from around the world to Bahrain. Today, it is an increasingly cosmopolitan nation. Tourism is a vital and growing business for Bahrain's future prosperity. Here, thousands of visitors are welcomed from Saudi Arabia via the King Fahad Causeway. 
A new causeway to Qatar is also planned soon. Others come by air, both business people and tourists drawn by the many attractions the country has to offer. James Hogan runs Bahrain state carrier Gulf Air. Gulf Air is regarded as one of the top 10 service airlines in the world. And one of our key ingredients is, is that welcome. In the Arab world, welcome to my home is so important. And when our guests come on board our aircraft, that same welcome is in our service proposition. Whether it be our chef, whether it be our nanny or cabin crew from 63 different countries, that can do that focus on service, that welcome is so important and we believe that reflects the nature of Bahrain as a country. Work is underway to attract other visitors. The opening of the Bahrain International Circuit in 2004 attracted thousands to the Formula One event. Now the home for motorsport in the Middle East, it will host the opening event of the 2006 Grand Prix season. I think Bahrain International Circuit acts as a hook uh, for the Kingdom of Bahrain. Uh, with the Formula One race, uh, we get viewership of 200, 250 million people watching uh, our kingdom, and I think that gets the attention here. Now, there are other factors and players that, that complete that picture, be it the Economic Development Board, the Financial Harbour, all of, all of these elements that, that come together to complete what the Kingdom of Bahrain is. Um, if we look at the, the circuit, um, we're uh, We've got our traditions, we've got our wind towers, our tent-like structures, but we're a modern facility. Um, I think that best describes the Kingdom of Bahrain. We, we have our, we're proud of our history, we're proud of our culture, but we're a modern kingdom. It's hoped tourism will provide up to a third of Bahrain's income within a decade and help create employment for the growing population. Across Bahrain, many new homes are already being created. Some are on land reclaimed from the sea. Projects such as the Durat Al Bahrain, with its luxury homes on an arc of 13 islands. And the Amwaj Islands, with homes and places for visitors. Other landmarks, such as the Bahrain National Monument, are also taking shape. The new National Library in Manama, and the Sheikh Khalifa bin Salman International Port. Increasingly, visitors come here to do business, and many financial and business institutions have made this their base for the region. With such growth underway, an increasingly skilled workforce is vital. Bahrain University, the kingdom's oldest, has long been preparing young people for top jobs. Its largest department is the Business School, with more than 5,600 students. Dr. Ahmed Khuder is the Head of Management and Marketing Studies. Here at the University of Bahrain, College of Business, uh, uh, we try our best, actually, to prepare our students to be uh, future uh, managers and future uh, uh, leaders uh, and try to, to provide the economy with all the uh, talents and skills we need in Bahrain in order to improve our economic development and to ensure our uh, uh, position as a financial uh, harbor, uh, in the, not in the region, but also uh, in the uh, international level as well. Bahrain is now a country increasingly at ease with itself and the world. The citizens have a developing sense of pride in their homeland. This is us feel that the society and the community are والحكومة طبعا اللي هو تسعى إلى الديمقراطية والمفتاح والمساواة بين الناس فهذا يعني كل كل هالأشياء تخليني أفتخر إن أنا بحرينية الحمد لله نعمة الأمان هاي أهم النقاط وبعدين في أشياء ثانية مثل الآن الاستقرار الانفتاح الديمقراطية هاي عدة عدة أشياء يعني تخلينا نشعر نحن مواطنين وفخورين بهاي الوطن 
One obvious source of pride is its new status as a democracy. Today, any ordinary Bahraini citizen can visit the building that houses the National Assembly. This group of school children have been seeing the nation's elected MPs at work. This is democracy in action, but it's also an evolving thing. Democracy is not a set rule and it offers nothing. It is a challenge. It depends on the people how they perceive democracy. It is true, it preserves the human aspiration for uh, self-development and self-freedom, but also it demands sharing, cooperation, compromise for better cause, for a common cause. It also asks the people to be loyal to a nation more than to a tribe, a group or a sect. It means also a practice of freedom of speech and allowing the others also to express their opinion. Most people would understand, most thinking people would understand that constitutional reform does not change the society overnight. The society is what it is with its culture uh, and it has to be influenced over quite some period of time. But you have to take some dramatic steps from time to time for change really to start in a society and, and such a change occurred uh, in Bahrain with this new constitution without, without any doubt. It's, uh, it's something which can create uh, fear in the, in the hearts of people who are used to holding power without being criticized. Well, they have to get used to it because it's in the interest of the common citizens that, that those in power are accountable. And, and that is what you achieve with this constitution. But also for the citizens, it's important to exercise freedom in a responsible way. Freedom doesn't mean that now I have the right to take away somebody else's right. The idea is to work constructively together for the common good, and, and that takes maturity. So a piece of paper, even as good as the Bahraini constitution, doesn't change that overnight, but it's a tool uh, and the good road uh, to, to working toward those ideals. The Bahrainis gained a lot from uh, the reform process. Uh, in fact, the, this process is a continuous process, but several things that human rights, labor unions, uh, freedom of speech, freedom of movement, all these things I think we need to be, or uh, they uh, are, uh, we need to institutionalize these uh, concepts in practice. Because without institutionalizing these things, uh, the democracy will not be very strong and I'm sure that the Bahraini people uh, will institutionalize these things gradually in the coming years. Bahrain in 2005 is a country that is many things. A place that welcomes visitors from around the world and does business globally but that also preserves a great heritage. Bahrain has many reasons to celebrate life today and its citizens now look forward to many bright tomorrows. Its sources of pride are many. Today's young people will soon inherit a country that is very different from that of their parents, thanks to the dynamic vision of King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He emphasizes that the deepest values must remain constant. <laughs> ومن أخلاق ومن دين هذه كما هي ولا أقدر أطلب الحقيقة المزيد لأن هل البحرين يعني أصبح يعني هم مثل ما بينت لكم من شوي هم بخدماتهم الكبيرة على الرأس والصغير منهم واللي معاكم واللي يريد إلى تربية وكذا ما في ملها مكان إلا الحظر وهذا الحقيقة اللي إن شاء الله إحنا وياكم نصير عليه في تربية أبنائنا وأجيالنا القادمة. Bahrain has many resources, but as His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa has always realized, its greatest asset is its people, and now for the first time in its history. They're playing a central role in defining its future course. Democracy is the key that is unlocking the door to a new Bahrain for the 21st century.